Chapter 2. States of Consciousness States of consciousness encompass various levels of awareness, influenced by both external factors like drugs and internal mental processes. Ranging from alertness to sleep, consciousness reflects our perception of self and surroundings. Alertness characterizes wakefulness, while daydreaming and drowsiness represents relaxed states with decreased focus. Sleep, marked by distinct brainwave patterns measured by EEG, comprise four main stages, beta, alpha, theta, and delta, each associated with specific frequencies and states of consciousness. The sleep cycle consists of non-rapid eye movement and rapid eye movement stages, repeating in 90-minute cycles. Non-rapid eye movement sleep includes three stages, stages one, two, and three, progressing from lighter to deeper sleep characterized by different brainwave patterns. When you see K-complexes and sleep spindles on an EEG during sleep, it typically indicates stage two non-rapid eye movement, characterized by brief bursts of rapid brain activity, which are the sleep spindles, and sharp waves, which are the K-complexes. Rapid eye movement sleep, during which most dreaming occurs, features rapid eye movements and muscle paralysis, facilitating memory consolidation. Circadian rhythms, regulated by melatonin and influenced by external cues like light, control, control our body's regular 24-hour cycles, affecting sleep-wake patterns. Dreaming, primarily occurring during rapid eye movement sleep, involves complex brain activity with reduced prefrontal cortex engagement, enabling illogical experiences. Theories on dream uh, range from Sigmund Freud's interpretation of unconscious desires to evolutionary perspectives suggesting threat simulation and problem-solving functions. Dreaming's role in memory consolidation, neural development, and maintaining brain flexibility underscores its significance in cognitive processes and overall mental health. Dream theories offer diverse perspectives on the significance and interpretation of dreams. Uh, so Sigmund Freud's theory uh, posits that dreams reflect unconscious desires and emotions with manifest content, representing the literal events of dreams and latent content, symbolizing deeper hidden meanings. According to Freud, analyzing dreams can unveil unresolved conflicts and improve provide insights into the psyche. In contrast, the activation synthesis hypothesis suggests that dreams arise from random neural impulses originating in the brainstem, which are then interpreted by the frontal cortex. In this view, the brainstem generates activation, while the cortex synthesizes these signals into coherent experiences. Dreams, therefore, may not inherently possess meaning but rather result from the brain's attempt to attribute significance to spontaneous neural activity. These theories present contrasting perspectives on the nature of dreams, with Freudian theory emphasizing unconscious symbolism and conflict resolution, while the activation synthesis hypothesis suggests that dreams are merely the brain's attempt to make sense of random neural firing. Sleep disorders can significantly impact daily functioning and overall health. Sleep deprivation can lead to irritability, memory impairment, increased risk of obesity, and heightened susceptibility to depression. Establishing a consistent sleep schedule and prioritizing adequate sleep, typically 7 to 8 hours for adults, is essential for overall well-being. Insomnia characterized by persistent difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, is a common sleep disorder. While medications can provide short-term relief, long-term use may lead to dependence and tolerance. Non-pharmacological interventions such as exercise or relaxation techniques before bedtime can also be beneficial. Narcolepsy, a neurological disorder, manifests an uncontrollable episode of sleepiness and may involve sudden transitions into rapid eye movement sleep. It is often genetic and linked to abnormalities in alertness neurotransmitters. Sleep apnea, 
affecting approximately 1 in 20 individuals, involves interruptions in breathing during sleep due to airway construction. Common symptoms include snoring, gasping, and daytime fatigue. Left untreated, sleep apnea can have serious health consequences, including cardiovascular issues. Breathing-related sleep disorders can result from various factors affecting the brain, airways, or lungs slash chest wall. Obstructive sleep apnea characterized by airflow obstruction is prevalent and worsens with age. Central sleep apnea involves breathing cessation without obstruction and may be associated with neurological issues. Hypnosis and meditation are techniques used to alter consciousness and promote relaxation. Hypnosis induces a state of heightened suggestibility and relaxation, potentially useful for pain management and behavioral ther therapy. Meditation involves self-regulating attention and awareness, with benefits for mental health and cognitive function. Both practices can modulate brain activity, leading to an increased alpha and theta waves associated with relaxation and focused attention. Depressants and opioids are two t classes of psychoactive drugs that can affect the central nervous system in different ways. Depressants lower the body's basic functions and neural activity, which can include reducing heart rate, slowing reaction time, and inducing feelings of relaxation. Alcohol is one of the most common depressants, and its effects include slow cognitive function, impairment judgment, and disrupted REM sleep, which can affect memory formation. Barbiturates are another type of depressant often used to induce sleep or reduce anxiety. They work by depressing the central nervous system. Benzodiazepines, such as Valium and Xanax, are widely prescribed depressants used to treat anxiety and insomnia. They enhance the brain's response to the neurotransmitter GABA, leading to increased inhibition in the nervous system. They can be characterized into short-acting, intermediate-acting, and long-acting types, with different durations and of action and uses. Opiates, including heroin and morphine, are substances derived from the opium poppy plant, or synthetic versions that mimic their effects. Unlike depressants, opiates are primarily used to treat pain and anxiety, acting on the body's receptor sites for endorphins, which are natural pain-relieving and mood-enhancing neurotransmitters. Opiates induce feelings of euphoria and pain relief, making them prone to recreational use and abuse. While both depressants and opiates may have overlapping effects in treating anxiety, they act on different neurotransmitter systems, with depressants primarily targeting GABA receptors and opiates acting on endorphin receptors. Stimulants are substances that increase neural activity and bodily functions, often leading to heightened alertness, energy, and euphoria. There is a wide range of stimulants, from commonly consumed substances like caffeine to more potent drugs like cocaine, amphetamines, methamphetamines, and ecstasy. Nicotine falls in between, as it is found in tobacco products and acts as a mild stimulant. Caffeine, for example, works by inhibiting adenosine receptors in the brain, which can disrupt sleep patterns and lead to wakefulness. Similarly, nicotine can disrupt sleep and suppress appetite. At higher levels, nicotine can cause muscle relaxation and the release of stress-reducing neurotransmitters to counteract hyperalertness. Both caffeine and nicotine are physiologically addictive, and withdrawal symptoms can include anxiety, insomnia, and irritability. Cocaine is a potent stimulant that releases large amounts of dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine in the brain, leading to intense feelings of euphoria. However, the rapid depletion of these neurotransmitters can result in a crash when the effects wear off, leaving users feeling very depressed. Regular cocaine can lead to serious health issues such as suspicion, convulsions, respiratory arrest, 
and cardiac failure. Similarly, amphetamines and methamphetamines also trigger the release of dopamine, leading to euphoric effects that can last up to eight hours. However, these substances are highly addictive, and long-term use may impair the brain's activity and ability to maintain a normal level of dopamine, leading to dependence and other health complications. Hallucinogens are substances known for their ability to cause hallucinations and alter perception. These drugs induce various types of hallucinations and can have both recreational and medical uses. Ecstasy, for instance, is a synthetic drug that acts as both a stimulant and a hallucinogen and increases the levels of dopamine and serotonin in the brain, leading to feelings of euphoria and heightened sensations. However, ecstasy can also damage neurons that produce serotonin, which plays a role in moderating mood. Users may experience hallucinations and a sense of artificial social connectedness. LSD, another hallucination, interferes with serotonin receptors, causing people to experience visual hallucinations. These hallucinations are often vivid and can significantly alter perception. Marijuana, although considered a mild hallucinogen, also alters perception. Its main active chemical, THC, heightens sensitivity to sounds, tastes, and smells. Like alcohol, marijuana reduces inhibitions and impairs motor skills and coordination. It can also disrupt memory formation and short-term recall and remains in the body for up to a week. However, marijuana is also used medicinally to relieve pain and nausea. Some hallucinogens, such as MDMA, which is ecstasy, and psilocybin, which is found in certain mushrooms, are being studied for their potential therapeutic effects. They are being explored as treatments for conditions like PTSD, as they can help individuals access painful memories detached from strong emotions, allowing them to come to terms with past experiences. Regarding drug dependence and homeostasis, the body strives to maintain internal stability, even in the presence of drugs. Regular drug use can lead to tolerance, where the body adapts to drugs effects and requires higher dosages to achieve the same effect. Drug cues, such as environmental triggers associated with drug use, can also lead to physiological responses like changes in heart rate, which can contribute to drug dependence and addiction. Drugs can enter the body through various routes, including oral ingestion, uh, inhalation, injection, and transdermal absorption through the skin. Each route has different onset types and effects, with IV injection being most direct and rapid, while oral ingestion typically takes longer to produce effects as it passes through the digestive system. The reward pathway in the brain plays a significant role in addiction. When experiencing pleasure, the brain releases dopamine, a neurotransmitter produced in the ventral tegmental area in the brain. This area, the VTA, sends dopamine to various regions including the amygdala, nucleus accumbens, prefrontal cortex, and hippocampus, collectively known as the mesolimbic pathway. Different stimuli activate this circuit to varying degrees. The release of dopamine reinforces the pleasurable experience with the amygdala associating it with enjoyment, the hippocampus forming memories of it, and the nucleus accumbens driving motivation to repeat the experience. Meanwhile, the prefrontal cortex focuses attention on it. Simultaneously, while dopamine levels rise, serotonin levels decrease, contributing to feelings of dissatisfaction and the desire for more pleasure. Genetic factors can increase susceptibility to addiction, as demonstrated in animal models where rats consistently increase drug dosage and prioritize drugs over other rewarding stimuli. Tolerance and withdrawal are a common phenomenon associated with addiction. Tolerance occurs when the body becomes accustomed to a drug, requiring higher dosages to achieve the same effect. With prolonged use, the brain may downregulate receptors or reduce dopamine production, leading to decreased sensitivity to the drug's effects. 
Withdrawal symptoms occur when a person stops using the drug after prolonged use, as the body struggles to adapt to the absence of the drug. These symptoms can range from mild to severe, and may include depression, anxiety, irritability, and physical discomfort. Individuals with substance use disorders may prioritize obtaining and using the drug over other aspects of their lives, and they may require increasing amounts of the drug to feel quote-unquote normal again. However, with time and effort, the brain can reverse some of the changes associated with addiction. Substance use disorders encompass a range of conditions involving the misuse of drugs, including alcohol, tobacco, cannabis, opioids, stimulants, hallucinogens, inhalants, and caffeine. Intoxication and withdrawal are two distinct processes associated with substance use disorders, each with its own set of behavioral and psychological effects. Substance-induced disorders, such as mood disorders, anxiety disorders, sleep disorders, sexual dysfunction, and psychosis, can arise as a result of substance use. Substance use disorders can significantly impair a person's ability to function in various areas of life, including work, school, and relationships. Treatment for substance dependence typically involves addressing both physiological and psychological symptoms. Detoxification may be necessary to manage withdrawal symptoms, often requiring medications to alleviate discomfort. Pharmacological treatments, such as methadone for opioid dependence or nicotine replacement therapy for tobacco dependence, can help reduce cravings and withdrawal symptoms. Psychological interventions, including cognitive behavioral therapy, motivational intervie interviewing, and group therapy, address cognitive and behavioral components of addiction. Each individual develop coping strategies and motivation for change. Relapse prevention stra uh, strategies are crucial for maintaining long-term recovery, as addiction can be a chronic condition with a high risk of relapse. Thank you guys so much for watching this chapter. Uh, this was, again, chapter two. Uh, we will be going into chapter three for the next video. Uh, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks so much.